We're on Route 109 in Central Mass. I'm Bob Lee with Dan Castle. We're going to join a C match in progress that was going on while Jeremy Seaholm struck gold at his first 705 just a moment ago. Dave Peterson, yeah, those scores are on the screen. You can see him. He came out throwing a 150. This is a C match against Mike Smith, former Blue Jays pitcher, uh, one of the up and coming candlepin bowlers who came right back at him with a 137. That's right, 267 to 236 after two. This is a great one. Dan Castle is going to be picking up the play by play from here. Take it away, Dan. All right, Peterson started off um, right uh, with. Eight so far. He's got the four six left. I believe he was on the head pin. He had three on the right, and uh, it's an eight box to start. Uh, guys are a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Peterson's on the microphone here for a lot of matches too, and uh, does great commentary. Mike being a teammate of mine on a couple of leagues. All right, Peterson is on the three pin. He's <laughs> drifts to the right a little bit, yeah. and he's got a uh, three drop, a pin drop. So four horsemen left, plus the five and eight, and, and the ten. Gonna pick that up and over adjust, so he still has five up. Try to get out of this box with an eight or nine. And uh, off into the ocean, but he still picks up two pins, so make it three maybe. There's three, so he gets an eight. I thought he was going to miss everything, but he came out okay on that one. So 15 after two for Dave Peterson. 15? No, that's an eight. So that's yep. 16 after two. Yep. 16. Oh, I'm sorry, the scoreboard didn't pick up that one. I'm, I'm looking at that because I'm in front of, of your stuff, so sorry if we don't always correlate. So six on the drop for Peterson with a check mark left and wood in front of that two pin. So the two, four, seven, and the five pin to the right. I think that wood could carry it if he hits a, probably the middle area of it. But she does, and he gets it. The ball bounced off the Ooh. wall and took out the seven. Oh. So a spare in the third for Peterson. Put on a show with his first game with that 150. Yeah, you were watching it out of the side of your eye. I was watching Jeremy Seaholm. I was watching both. Throwing his 145 in the fifth to collect 705. His first 700 of his illustrious career. He's been bowling a long time. Oh, two fill. Two in the fill, a half Worcester right. I've known Jeremy since our Natick days when he was probably 19 years old, 18, 19 years old. And he was a hell of a bowler then, and he still is. On the half Worcester spare attempt, Dave puts on a great bid on that and uh, doesn't get them all to go, though. He still has a split, 6-7. Wood by the 6, maybe he can pick up a 9 or a 10 here. If he hits a 6-pin, I think he's got a good shot at a 10. And there you go. Dave's been working hard on his game. He practices a lot. He's come a long ways. Um, you know, uh, last year I bowled against him in, in Norwood, and um, that was quite a match. But uh, he's coming on strong this year. He's carrying in it, um, still carrying about 100 average, just under 100. He's off on the three pin again. Yep. So, let's see. Yeah, Dave's carrying a 99.08 average and has a win loss of 85 and 97. Oh, what a bid on that one. Is it going to go? He's got a nut, got a wobbler, but not going to go. So he came in on the inside of that opening and uh, carried everything but that eight pin. So Dave's in second place in his group. Of the 16 bowlers broken into groups of four, he's in Division Two in the C South uh, group, and uh, he's in second place in that group. Now Mike Smith comes up. As Bob mentioned, Mike is a former pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays, among some other teams he pitched for. He's still playing baseball in the summer uh, in the Boston Parks League. Last year won the championship and was named the most valuable player in the league. And uh, he's picked up camp and bowling and doing great with it. 
up and coming. Um, fortunate enough to bowl on a couple teams with Mike. And he's just a great guy. He carries about a 106 average this year. He's 89 and 93 in his record. His first drop was an eight drop, and he can't get that two pin to go. So that's a nine box for Mike. He's a pin ahead in completed boxes. Mike throws some big games sometimes. He's really come along. He's only been bowling about two or three years. And he's just got a natural athletic ability. He throws a powerful ball. I can't read this, the radar from here, but I'm sure Bob will give it to us in a second. Mike coming into box two of game three. He won the second game, 137 to 117. Lost the first one, 150 to 99. And he went to the right that time onto the six pin and leaves the four horsemen left plus the three five. So a little too much of an adjustment to the left. It's three left. My apologies to the viewers at home. I'm, re I'm repositioning and resetting our, all of our pin cams. So with that nine box, Mike's at 18 after two. Dave, Dave Peterson's uh, 150 was a career high, by the way. You know, I just, just, just caught Seaholm down there making an incredible <laughs> spare again. Yeah. He's bowling with his daughter just for fun, and he picked up the 5's 10 nice and neat. So on the head pin on that last one for Mike, and... Can't get the square to go a little too far to the left. So Seaholm's still bowling pretty well. And that's an eight box. So Mike's at 26. Dave's at 28 after three. Off to the three pin for Mike, but getting some late action. If you can get that wood to turn, he's hoping it turns. Well, it still may not be too bad. It's between the one, two. He's got the one, two, eight, and ten. He can hit the head pin. He's got a good shot at this one. Oh, what a ball. He does, and it just can't get that eight pin to carry. Smith uses an abbreviated motion. His pitch is coming in at 37 miles an hour off his hand. 33. Point six at the head pin, according to Ryan's. And there's a 10. And that was on a spare. He throws a little harder on his strike ball. Uh, it's 37. He, he doesn't take it all the way back. Yeah. He, he's not He's not generating like the you know the Justin Waters, you know, Josh Daly over the top, Corey Packard over the top fire. Yeah. He comes around behind his back like a lot of 10-pin bowlers do. Mike lives here in Millis. He grew up in Massachusetts. And he's brought in some other bowlers, too, from his baseball friends. So first ball. There's one. Oh, just in that pocket. Too loud. There we go. All right, so he's left with the 3-7-9. And just gets the 3, so matching 45. Oh, 43. Yeah, 44. <laughs> Did it pick it up right? It's a, uh, no, it didn't. Yeah, that's a 44, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. That was an 8 box. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be looking for comments here. All right, first ball in box 6 for Dave Peterson. And he starts with a seven drop, and he's left with a one seven nine. This would be nice if he can get it going. He's got to hit the head pin and make something happen here. Oh, got the one and the seven to go, and he jumped over to the nine, but got blocked by some wood, so no spare here.
Dave has one spare so far in this game, but a disappointing two, Phil. And he's got the 10, so 55 after six. Coming in a box seven on lane 18 here in Ryan's Family of Musos and Millis. And Dave is just off the head pin on the three. And he's left with a split. One, two, four, ten. Wood in front of the ten. Got to carry the ball or the pin over there. And a spare attempt. He's in there. Just a little full on the head pin. Nothing went to the right. So another open box. Going to be under par through seven. Just one mark in the string so far to fill. And there's a 10 box. Back 60, in the third. 65 after seven. He's pinning well. Just got to get those marks coming in. That two fill did not help. Just gives him a one pin lead through completed boxes against Mike. So 65 after seven is going to need a mark to get to 100. He's on the head pin that time. Breaks up the split, and now it just has a 10 pin to shoot at. Wood in front of it. He's got to keep it out of the gutter. That should go. Out of the channel. I'm sorry. I use the right terminology. We don't call it a gutter anymore. So Dave, I've been bowling with Dave out of Norwood and in Millis for the, since 2019. Oh. One of the first, first teams I joined. He's the president of the uh, Tuesday Night Bowlers Club in Norwood. Um, he's carrying about, he's carrying, I think, a 98 average this year, this season in Norwood. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a 106, I believe. It was 105 last week, and I think he, he upped it to 106 here at Millis. That's about the difference between maybe the fastest and the slowest house, certainly in Massachusetts. All right, so that nine box puts Dave at 74 through eight. Definitely slowed down since his 150 in the first and 117 in the second. Trying to find that, that mark. And nice head pin hit. Ten pin falls late, and he's left with the three and the nine. So this is one of those odd pin combinations that it's really easy to punch out when all the rack's up there, but really tough to do when those are the pins that are left. Look at this one. You got to be perfect on it, yeah. and uh, anything that deflects that pin to either side, and that's what happened. Deflected to the right, he was very full on it. I find I find it goes about as often when you smack it thin and knock it off the wall. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. So a nine box in the ninth puts David eighty three. Do doesn't work at Norwood. Though. Nothing no. comes off the walls in Norwood. I've done well in Norwood. I, I don't know why, but you are right. Nothing what's your comes end? What, what's your end there? How many how many times have you been there? Oh, about half a dozen or so. I, I would, I've won most of my matches I've, there. I've bowled there for six seasons. It's miserable in terms of scoring. My high in Norwood is one thirty one, and that was against uh, Gerard Horgan last year. Yeah, that's. And I bowled Dave there a uh, season or two ago. And uh, I just recently bowled Gerard there again. Yeah, I've, I've thrown about a 1,000 strings there, and it is consistently 10 pins lower than here in Millis. It is weird. I mean, the action is very different there. And that nine box closes Dave out with a 92. No, it doesn't because no, he's got so another ball to go. I'm going to say. He could have a 93. Yeah. All right, now it's officially a 92. So Mike's coming up. He's got a good opportunity here. Yep. Does not have to mark. I was going to say, Dan, my, my whole Wednesday night team also bowls Tuesday nights in Norwood. Um, and all of, us, all of us carry a 9 to 12 pin higher average. I believe it. I, I believe it. Um, and even talking to other bowlers there, I know I had a match last year downstairs in Norwood 
and I had a 117, and some league bowlers were there. I was like, wow, that's a really big score yeah, for here. You don't see that very often. No. You might be the only person with a 100 in a, in a string in the whole league. I mean, th- th- not that it's the you know, same kind of bowlers that you see two Wednesday nights here in Millis. No, but. no. No, so, but then I've had some stinkers there, too, and stuff that I thought should go didn't because it just died off the wall. That's a 10. And there's a 10 for Mike for 54. After six, he's still down a pin on Dave. Uh, if he just pins out, he's got a shot, but it's got to be all nines and tens here, so a spare would be really helpful for him. Typical, typical bro, pro brawler leaves eight pins on the deck per it, string. Per string, yeah. I think in the Cs, you'd expect it to be closer to 12 to 14 pins. All right, so Mike is shooting at the four. Got a good pitch. Well, if you can get that carry, wow. maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, my. All right, no. Almost a crazy spare. And that, that ball speed he puts up on there really helps with things like that. There's a 10 box for 64 after 7. He's still down a pin. All right. Ticker has him. Needs, needs 29 in the next three to win. No room for error here. Can only afford one 9 box. Oh, it's going. All right. That gives him a great spare opportunity here with just the 6 pin and I wood think, in front of it. I think about all 15 inches of that pin are good. Uh, it's possible, I think, on the left to spin it in the wrong way. He's going right at it, and that there goes, no problem. 74 in a ball. That'll put him in the lead on the string. His first string was a 99. His second, a 137. Mike carried my team last night. Because we, we were in a league match. And on the head pin... That... Almost locks it. <laughs> you know, you can tell from Mike's posture, you're not real happy with that. I don't blame him. He threw a good ball. Six in the fill. Puts him at 80. And 86 with those pins down. He needs seven more pins total to win. And he's trying to shoot it to 4, 5, 7, 10. Try to sweep that wood. Just misses. He's still trying to catch up on total, too. He's got a ways to go. It's in the channel. That'll be a six. Six box. All right. So, so last year, Mike joined the uh, ACST midstream, um, subbing in for a re uh, bowler who had been injured. And he did pretty well. He did pretty well. And uh, this year, full time. Bowling in multiple tournaments and leagues. Okay, he's at 91. All right. He needs one pin to tie two to win. He wants more than that because he's down quite a bit in total. Four horsemen plus a 10 pin. Now he's okay, got to pick up two to pins. The last ball. It's two pins to win. Both ballers slow down as soon as the camera comes on. <laughs> they were really throwing some good games in the first two. Oh, oh no. Uh oh. Oh That's no. That's going to do it. Peterson will come up with a. Win by two pins, 92 to 90. It was there. Yep. It was there. But that happens to all of us sometimes. As we saw in Worlds in November, where it came down to the last ball on both sides, and both guys got spares, clutch spares, and then it was down to the fills, and... One ball on one team. I'm, I'm, I'm not to give in details, but one ball went errant. You were there, mister. I was. Some beautiful coverage out of that. Really the highlight of a Candlehead Bowling Network's three seasons of coverage. We covered every round for a week. All right, Dave Peterson now leading four to two. With a match lead of 32 pins, 359 to 327, with his first ball in the fourth string. We joined midway. Dave Peterson threw his 
his career high, 150 in string one. Mike Smith came right back, 137, 117, and you just saw string three came down. It was a pillow fight down to the last box, 92, 91. And Peterson off to the left a little bit. He really wanted to be in that uh, three, uh, two, four pocket. But uh, misses, so trying to pick up one or two out of here, come out with a nine or ten. And uh, drifted to the right a little. He was trying for that two pin. But prudently played it on the inside instead of trying to kick it over so that he knew that if he missed that, he had a good shot at least getting one. And he did a nine box for Dave in box one of game four. You know, Dave, Dave is a mature bowler, but his bowling actually has matured uh, by leaps and bounds in the last two seasons. There's, there's no doubt about that, just I, watching him. I, I mean, I, I lured him out of, out of the Norwood uh, lanes and brought him on to, uh, out to events in spare time, Putnam Street, and certainly to here, and joined my league this year. And he's, he's had a chance to go head-to-head -head with the likes of... Uh, of Sean Casey a couple of weeks ago, and he he kept up with him. It, you know, you know he, he, he lost overall in the total, but he kept up. We, we ended up winning the match. Um, no no small part to, to his fine play there. It's a nine in the second for 18. For oh, he, he works hard. I know he bowls with you and John Ahern and Dave Rando and some others that come in a lot to, to practice, and Dave really gets a lot out of his practice. So nine, what is he at, 18 after two. That's a head, right that's a head, head pin hit. hit. Nice. All right, if you're going to get that leave. That ball, 24.7 at the head pin. So we're looking at the 2.57 in wood position really well behind the 2 and the 5. So he's got to be in that 2.5 pocket, I think. And just went through the hole and clipped the 7, so an open box here. So Dave does. Uh, there we go. There's a ten. What an interesting no, way to get goes. it. <laughs> there it goes. Ten, it goes. Huh? So Dave's great on the microphone too. I, I've worked a few matches with him, and then, not to blow my own horn here, but he called a match that I was in with Patrick Kellogg, and you and him were on the mic, and uh, commentary was awesome. It was a fun match. Um, that was when Patrick was in his third match of the day. His, oh right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming up from uh, the Cape. <laughs> and uh, I thought I had him in hand, but in the 15th game of the day for him. He just turned it on. Interesting. So the uh, Bushnell, which which is a certified certified within one mile an hour accuracy, showed 29 miles an hour on that pitch. That was 25.8 at the at well, the object. Dave is throwing. <laughs> that's about as fast as I've ever seen him throw. Well, he bounced it in. He dropped yeah. it, and, and he makes the spare. And uh, but it stayed on course. It didn't drift at all and uh, gets the mark. I have not seen him hit 30 yet, but 29 is the most I've seen. And that, and you just mentioned John Ahern. He, John's come a long ways, too. He was throwing 16 miles an hour when I first met him. He's 24 miles an hour now. Yep. And it makes a difference. It makes a huge yeah, it difference. It makes a difference, too. I've I mean, gone, you have to get, I've you have gone to downhill. with your accuracy. But yeah. Well, I always say velocity, or accuracy is more important than velocity, but if you can get both, then that's great. Um, I would say there, you, you can't teach velocity. You have to work velocity. You have to yeah. work it out. What oh, a there we go. Oh, my goodness. There we go. And that, by the way, that one, he, he threw that one just as fast as the other one. That one, 23.7. And how about that? 40, so you had a 7 fill for 45 in the fourth. He'll sit down with 55 in a ball. So it slowed down a little bit in the third, the guys did, but Dave's coming back now. So Mike coming up on game four. Or he's obviously not happy oh, after yeah. the finish in the last and one. That's a good way to come back after that. Blast the head pin. Wood is way out on the plate. That's about three feet or more in front of the four and seven. Good there we way go. to handle it. He went to the seven. Because I was thinking naturally you would tend to go toward the four on that, but I was afraid that might not cover the seven pin if you do that. But he played it right. Good eye.
I think Mike's the only um, bowler that we have anywhere who has pitched games at Fenway uh, against the Red Sox, but he did. Not in an exhibition either, yeah. No, no. He has yeah. some great stories to tell. M Manny Del Carmen is a is a candle pinner. Plays out of out of the Dorchester and um, sometimes the Olindies, Quincy. But haven't gotten him out on the circuit. No, I used to bowl in Dorchester once a week. Uh, so Mike has a seven box there. So twenty three after two. You know, we, um, when I worked for John Hancock, they had a bowling league. Um, and I'd worked for the parent company, and then we merged. So I, I find out they had a bowling that, league. That's the one that's next to the Keystone Building, right? I, uh, the uh, Dorchester. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. They yeah, have they, they have like five or six lanes of uh, candle pin and rest is ten pin. Yeah. But we had that's a four team league there. Well, it was a lot of fun. That one, that one is open 24 hours. It used to be open 24 hours. I, I bowled there once or twice when I was a reporter. I worked at, at we'd finish up our shift at around 2 in the morning, and there right, wasn't well, always anything to do. Well, that was an 8 box for Mike, 31 after 3, but he is in the lead. However, he's now up against two marks by Dave Peterson. A spare 7 and an open spare. See, I use a Canadian terminology for the spare. It's an open box. Yeah, that'll that, that'll clarify things, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hey. All right, half Worcester right for Mike. Let's Just call. It. What do we call up, down, and uh, nine, ten? There you go. <laughs> well, we're at it. <laughs> well, it's an open spare still. And, and I talked to some Canadians up there, and they call that an open box. Yeah, it's and open because there's, there's, there's still, still scoring still to go. scores on. going into it. Right. It's logical, very logical. All right, Mike's off to the right there. He'll be open in the American sense in the fourth box. And uh, actually, that was his third ball. He's at 38. 38? Yeah, 38. I thought I saw four pins standing at the end of that one, though. He picked up two on his third ball. Okay. I'm there we go. Oh, come on. All right. That's just not fair. That was a strike. Ball coming off for the wall from the right and Double blo tap. blocked by a pin coming from the left. So single pin spare to make. On Straight. it. No Only problem. He's great at those. Used Used it all. 3.1 inches wide at the base, the candle pin is. But with I, I meant, you know, with a four and a half inch ball, you actually have a pretty good, almost a foot that that ball can be in and still take out a single pin. No, Dan. Aim, if you're aiming the middle of the ball. Well, you're a, oh, you want to hit the middle, but you do have, no, no, it's a no, bigger Dan, target. Dan. This is like the left tail, right tail thing. If, you're, if you aim the middle of the ball at the middle of the pin, mm -hmm. you have two two and a quarter inches of ball right. along with one and a half one and a half 1.6 inches right. of pin that's 3.7 inches it's not a foot well it's it's true <laughs> however if your ball well, is off, two and it's seven and a half inches i'll yeah, give you that yeah if, if your ball is off to the right and and the the edge of the eight it, on the fill by the way for dave yeah. peterson yeah, you still ahead. you still have you still have four, almost four and a half inches on either side of the pin that it will still go with. Oh, no, it wasn't connected. All right, so open box for Davies is 63 after five. Yeah, I, th I think he thought that the uh, back piece on the eight pin would cover that. Gets a 10. Four pin. There was wood adjacent to both the four pin and the eight pin, but there was no overlap there. 73 after six. So Mike's going to have to come in and spare some as long as Dave keeps going like this. So four boxes to go. Beauty. That's a head pin hit. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. All right, it, so that could go. Well, yeah, I, I, I would tell him to pop the 10 pin. Yeah. Except I know the, he's, he's a lot better. He's a lot better to the left. Than the, the ten pin is his. That's his nemesis. His nemesis. Yeah. I think that's the shot, though. I don't like the way the woods 
ne to the left of the nine. I don't think it's aimed in the right direction. But on the other hand, there's wood by the seven that if you tap that somehow, uh, we'll see. It's gonna be a, gonna be a tough one. He's got to first get the ball to the okay. ten. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, it, it had a chance. He took the nine and ten. I don't know if he was intentionally going there. So, no less than a nine in this box anyway. I think he might have been going for the other side of the pin there. And that's, that's out of the nine. channel, yeah. so a nine bucks. Okay, 82 through seven, 12 over for Peterson. Smith finished with a spare. He is two under his box, but uh, with a fill coming. So he'll need Peterson to pin out. He'll force Smith into one or two marks. He's in that pocket again, a little light. All right, they oh, broke yeah. up the split. Now he's got just his nemesis pin, the 10 pin to go. That's one I, I could guarantee you the 7 pin would have never fallen on that ball in Norwood. No, I think you're right. He's right at it. That is a pretty pickup there. Third spare of the string. Dave Peterson, who earlier, well, we were covering Jeremy C. Holmes' record setting, personal record, 7.05. And ACST's A. 92 in this fall. Anyway, Phil. Peterson threw a 150, which is his career best. All right, Cleary left, and a five in the fill puts him in 97 after eight. It's a four horseman plus the nine. We call that the Cleary for Bob Cleary. He's in. Oh, just off the head pin. Just off the head pin. I thought the ball was going to drift back right a little bit. Not enough. Open in the ninth. Still putting up a good string here. So why do why do we Americans use the term open? I I don't know. Yeah, after I hear the Canadian explanation, I'm like, well, why do we use the other? Uh, maybe maybe someone got confused in the early early days and thought thought it sounded good to say open, and then flipped it around. Well, I I got called on it a lot because uh, some of the Canadians said, "Why do you call that an open box?" You know, and. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting because when you think about it, it kind of is logical. I can't think of the answer now. I, yeah. I used to. I used to know. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Nice job. That was Justin. nice ball. Nice ball. Justin for Waters, who uh, threw a six forty three and one total, uh, and an eight six in his match against Mike Nardone. Well, Jeremy Seaholm swept Dan Esdale, throwing once again a seven zero five. So we had um for the spare. He's in there. Oh yeah! Taps it over. <laughs> that used all 3.1 inches ball. That's right. Yeah, we had a lot of conversations about the differences between terminologies um, used in bowling for the Canadians and the Americans. So they found it amusing when we said somebody made a good bid on something. That didn't make any sense to oh, them. Oh, really? Yeah. A bid is a try. Yeah. Oh, that's a pretty nine fill, a 125 for Peterson. Scoreboard shows 124. What's missing up there? Um, I don't know. Is that right? We'll wait till the thing clears. My vision's not great lately. I had him at 116. Was a nine fill, uh, oh. 105, 124. 115 plus 9. It's 124. All right. I'm not sure. I, all right. I, I Probably I messed that up. Well, the electronic scoring is not perfect here. Mike starts out with his fill with 4 and gets the bird. Ooh. Pins. The spread eagle. Flipping him one. One of the least favorite leaves here, but puts a great effort on uh, trying to pick that up. You go three at a time, ideally, but... Um, I've, made, I've made three of those this year, but I've, I've certainly hit my... Probably 300 of them, so <laughs> there's nothing special about that. <laughs> I hit one last season. I actually got it to go. Anyway, that was a four fill on the um, 52 yeah. to close out the half, and he's at 60. I've seen Mike spare the spread eagle, I believe. Hmm. All right, box seven. 
There we go. He's that time is very similar ball, but he went slightly to the left of the head pin and got a lot better result. So the 6'10, the wood's a little ugly, I think. I think it's got the possibility of deflecting the ball to the right. He's going for the cap oh and no. gets nothing. Nothing for his efforts. Mike's a very passionate bowler. And he works hard too. He practices a lot. His uh, wife, uh, Ashley, also bowls. And, uh, yeah, she had her high 122 earlier this season. She did. Well, we were calling a match. We, I saw her over on the left. <laughs> so I guess, unfortunately, he won't be on my team next year on Friday nights because uh -huh. him and Ashley are going to have their own team. So I'm going to be looking for a teammate. You know, positions in leagues at, at Ryan Family Amusements in Millis are hard to come by now. Uh, I, you know, James Humes heard heard a rumor that I was moving west, and he swept in, and he's on the he's taken over the uh, captaincy of the team with Peterson and and Ahern. All right, Mike went right to the right. Nope. Yeah, I'm on three leagues here, plus the once a month. Now, I don't think I, I don't think this we're getting an accurate count here. It says there's only six down there. Okay, well, sometimes it does that. Yeah, I, I think these gentlemen are going to have to watch that real close. <laughs> I, I, I was reasonably sure that there. Yeah, I don't know. mention that to Dave that there's yeah. a discrepancy here and make sure he knows his boxes here. Anyway, that, he's at 78 now. That, that it, it did pick up there on the screen overhead. All right, he's going to got to pick up um, 46 pins in two boxes, yeah. so. A spare strike combination would be a pr pretty much essential here. So will the one three seven? That's a ball. Got it. That was the For ball. Second to look like he was going to get taken advantage of by the pins. I won't say it another way. And um, something came off as it should have. And so there's a mark in the ninth for Mike Smith. 88 plus a ball. Third spare here in the fourth string. Needs a big fill in another. Really needs a strike. He's got a chance at one. Oh boy. There it is. Nice call, Dan. Mike's clutch. It's one reason I like bowling with him more than against him, which I do on Monday nights. We have a small four team league here on Monday nights. That was a 20 box in the ninth. He's at 98. Now 108. It's got to strike again. Yeah, he needs. It's coming. Oh, no. Nope. Overcooked it. So Dave will take he, this string. He moves to 6 to 2 in ACST points. Oh, look at that. Picks up a 10 fill for a 118. A 5 mark 118. Well, he, he's nothing if not relentless. So even when he's getting, he just keeps grinding away. And it didn't quite go his way that way, but, you know, there was a four fill in there. Well, that made the difference, really. You know what? Um, that, that problem, and then I think the fill in the first spear, I can't read it. It looks like a four fill there, too. So it was two, a story of a couple of bad fills. Could have easily gone the other way. And the one was a spread eagle. He was on the head pin. Yeah, so. that, that's on the uh, negative side. But how about Dave Peterson's pickup, though? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Peterson is just, uh, you know, both guys heated up after that last game. So that's great. Peterson's on fire, though. He's at 483 after four. Doesn't need much to break 600. And I don't know if he's done it before. No, I would say not. All right, he so Castle left. He's pointing at me. He had his. We high. still have bowlers calling it that. See? Yeah. He, he won a candy bar uh, the, uh, about three weeks ago from uh, Steve Reno. And I believe it was 591. That was his high. Mm -hmm. He's going to run a bit at it. Almost, almost. Duncan calls that this leave that never goes. And it goes occasionally. I've made it about twice without wood in the last year. I made it once without wood in the last year. Um, made it with wood a few times. Um, but most of the time I don't make it. 
Oh yeah, no, it, it's a it's a two to five percenter. I, I I don't have enough numbers to say that for sure, but it's a frustrating leave because it's always always the result of a good first ball, and and also it often has a good big fat piece of wood hanging out in front of the four seven or the six ten, yeah. and it looks like it might go, but yep, there's always one piece of wood in the wrong position. Slap that wood position. into the corner, and it, ne- it it doesn't pick, it doesn't pick back. You have to hit the tip of that wood. And then, even then, when it flips back, it, it usually flips back, back in front of the 10 pin. Oh, just left. Just off of that. If, yeah. Dave, if Dave was aiming the middle of his four and a half inch ball at the middle of that pin, that well, means he missed by three point, um, I think, 3.2 inches, 3.7 inches. Got it that time on the side. 2.2 plus. 1.6, so 3.8 inches of, of slop, of flap. 19 through two. So he's left one on the deck, looking for his first mark in game five. My brother, my brother ran a. Uh... All right, off to the right on the three pin. The, takes the out trigonometry four. of it. If you if you throw the ball uh, a quarter of a degree off, 0.26 degrees off, you will miss the head pin. Mm-hmm. One degree off is good enough to hit the to hit the uh, gutter. So that's one thing to keep in mind. I, I've been in a slump lately, and what you're telling me is that I'm not throwing it that far off, really. Just a small de- degree or so, not even a degree. Let me let, let me take that then. Yeah, no, a degree. Yeah, you, you, it's tough to steer a boat that accurately. Then again, there's a lot of waves. There's no waves on the. Oh, jeez. Well. Not in a well-maintained lane. All right, nine box for Dave Peterson. 28 after three. Oh, there's a pin hanging in the back. Yeah, we're going to have to send uh, hit DW. young Matt down. No, uh, just throw, hit DW and throw a ball back down it. And try to reset it. Yeah. So... As you can see on Bob's pin there cam, goes. there it went. All right, so there was one down in the pit that was kind of hanging out. He, he should hit with. Oh, still down there. So can you see it on the pin? You can't see it on the pin cam, Mike. But the reason you can't see it on the pin cam is you have the pin cam at the wrong lane, Bob. It's stuck. So can you reorient the pin cam so that it covers mm. that side? And it's pointing at the other. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. That's dumb. That means I've been doing that all along. Come on, Bob. All right. We're getting a good number of open bowlers in here today, Easter weekend. A lot of kids, uh, kids league, uh, what we call the junior senior league here, uh, finished up last week. My granddaughter's in that league, and uh, a lot of bowlers' kids are in that league. Um, and then uh, Jake Cook, who was one of the coaching t- staff along with Dan and Kate Finn for that league, uh, has started a new league for the summer for the kids, and this is going to be fun. It's going to be a two-person team, one adult, one kid under 18. Uh, my grand, my 12-year-old granddaughter is going to bowl in it with me and uh, give them their first taste of competition, actually. And uh, it'll be a fun league to... I think most of the spots are full, but you can inquire with Jake to see if there's an, a, a position, if that sounds interesting to you, and if you haven't heard that. So Jake Cook is running that show. And that starts in June. So some of the kid league bowlers are here right now. I see at least one two that have been bowling just for for fun all right we've corrected uh, young Matt Taylor ACST bowler in my group and uh, another up and coming um, just went and cleared it out for us so Peterson on his fourth box just off the head pin leaves a clear he left he came in on the three pin not too far off the head pin And half a degree would have made a big difference. Yeah, maybe less than half a degree. 
That one's got a chance. Oh, he was in that yeah. pocket. Left this seven and the nine. You need some nice action off the wall to get to get the clear to go like that. So probably going at the seven. No, he's going over to the right. Picks up a nine. I find the clear he does go a little better uh, from the outside. If you pound pound yeah. the four horsemen from the outside and managed to push the ball and head pin back into the clear pin. Yeah, most of the time if I make that, if I make that, it's uh, on the side of the head pin away from the rest of the four horsemen. Right. All right, another one. We get to see another bid at it. This time he's got some wood to play with. Mm. But I don't know that that wood's really going to be of Pointed any use. Pointed away, yeah. I mean, he has the tip of it, so that it can bounce off the left wall if he hits the tip. I still think he wants to be between the one three. Yeah, it's trouble, trouble between the one three. Let's see. No, he went to the three. He was going there, but carried everything but the head pin. All right, hey. so no spares to the first half of the fifth game for Dave. Well, he will be open the for, for the top of the fifth. Yeah, that didn't do any good. So a nine box, and Dave closes the fifth box of the fifth game with a 46. And I'm not sure what I mean by open now. You've, I've, 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 you've, left, you've left this doubt hanging over my head. What I've does that even mean? Tilted your world away from you, Bob. Markless. I'm giving you a new world view. I didn't even get a chance to go to Moncton, and I'm I know freaked I, out. We definitely missed you not being there. Hopefully, uh, if we do it again in Maine this next year, then maybe you'll be there. Actually, for that. they will be. Um, Bangor uh, conditions are going to require that they find a different house. I, I don't okay. know if they've reached a final official oh, statement right. on I, that. I did hear something about that. Okay, that one was an interesting bid. That that was the one three six. He hit he hit the three six pocket, but the wood chopped back and almost took the head pin out. So there's a 10 box for Mike. Chasing a 46 half from Peterson. So Dave needs to pick it up if he wants to hit that magic number. Yeah. So needing a 117. Need a 71 half. Yeah. It's in, it's in his realm. All right, so Mike forgot to hit the DW. And so that counted on the scoreboard as a strike, and it's definitely not a strike. He didn't throw a ball, but hmm. Mike's hey. good at running the equipment and got rid of that, so he's ready to go for box two. He, he's in a couple leagues and practices a lot here. <laughs> yeah, he's in uh, three leagues here. Um, Monday, Monday, yeah. Monday uh, St. Joe's League, Friday Night Mix League, and uh, Once a Month League. And, That's right. Uh, so uh, Mike and I bowl with Rob Linehan. Steve uh, Reno and um, uh, Peter Penny on them once a month. And then um, on Monday, he bowls on a different team from me. And he's moved into the anchor spot. And um, they're in first place right now. Seven in the second for Smith, 17. And then on Friday, he bowls on my team with uh, me, um, him, um, Sean uh, Breton and uh, Gary Middleton. Oh, yeah, Sean's on my once a month league team. He's starting to show some control that he's got. He's got the speed. He needs to show get get uh, that stability in his footing and his release. There Beauty it is. There. There it is. That was a strike. A lot of stability there. In, a, in baseball Smith. terms, he was in a strike yep. zone. You don't want him throwing overhand. There's going nine. There's nine. Yeah, that, that's a good fill. 36 after three. So he's still pitching in that Boston Summer League and uh, playing third base as well. He's, he's sad that that wood rolled away I, it, right now, and it, and it turned a little at the end to make it a, it'd be a little crazy to go for it. But let's see. He's, he's just straight at the pin. Yeah. Yep. Spare on spare. So 46 and a ball. I'd say 45. Should be. No. No? Oh, 46? Okay. Yeah, 46 and a ball. He had a 10, a 7. That's right. I get it. A spare 9, and then a spare. Ooh. 
in that right pocket. Damn. And uh, <laughs> was a check mark. Now yeah. it's a castle left. Now it's a trick shot. <laughs> Pretty much, the yeah. Um, the, pin, the pin goes down and stays down, and then that will go on your score forever. I but mean, conceivably, you could try to bounce it off the wood, going a little high on the wood, or go to the two. He's going to go for the trick shot. Nope. And he can hit it right at the absolutely perfect angle, and it, the ball could have taken out the 4-7. He's doing it again. That's the one. It, it took out the four five. Yeah, he hit it low, but 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 it was backed up by the five, and that was almost the perfect trick shot. Anyway, nine six. Is that a sixty two? Sixty two after yep. five. So Dave's coming back up to clo close out the match. He's at forty six. Sixteen is a two and a half mark lead. He needs. In a, in a division where I think they're averaging about one and a half to two marks per game. So that's, that's a big lead. Now well, he started with a 150. Yeah, um, the, the, this has not been a typical C match. Only one game. Well, you'd be surprised. We've been seeing in C and D some big scores going on lately. So don't discount them. With as many bowlers as we have now, there's really fine delineations between the, the divisions. What was the average to begin the season? Um, the cut was, I think, 100 to 108. One, uh, yeah, both of these guys are well above that now. Uh, Dave's running 90, 98, 99 right now yeah. in, in this right. competition. Oh, tough. Four horsemen won't go. That was kind of the... Uh, but I just had a match with Jerry Amaral, who's all on fire in the yeah. D division. And I threw a 115 in the first game. He, he came back at me with a 142. And that's D division. So don't count us out. And that's a seven drop for Dave for three in a row here. He's uh, looking at the 3 6 10. Yeah, Dave's been doing well. D uh, Jerry Amaral has been doing amazingly well. Yeah, what are, what are the playoff stats? Did you you had? I, I had them up, up, but I don't have them up right now. I don't know where these guys stand in playoffs. We'll take a quick look. Bear with me, gang. I'm using Facebook on my phone. Peterson aiming for a ten here with his third ball in the seventh. We'll take eight. He's at 61, nine under his box. Meaning if he throws all 10s, he'd end up with a 91. Oh, uh, the scoreboard up there has him. It's 63. Yep. All right. Is it missing pins or adding I pins? I don't know. It, it Give it the benefit of the doubt. I saw it. They had him at a 55 after 6, and now 63. So if he pins out, he would be at uh, 93. Good 1 3 6. Look, wood behind the 1 and the 3. It'll go. Well, both Unless it bounces hard like that. Both these guys Ouch. are in playoff contention. So before this match, um, Mike was in fifth for the wild card spot. This is the leading wild card. Or. or or was he in? Ninth? He's in the bubble. He's on he's the bubble. He's on the bubble. Ninth, ninth overall. Yep. And, okay. and uh, Dave is two behind him. So the wild card right now is Brian Surprise, Matt DePiro, Mark Van Heinegen, Wayne Bullock, then Mike Smith, Dan Finn, Dave Peterson, Nate Wheeler. Wow, Danny's out. He was in the finals of the semi-pro division a couple of years ago in the Bs. Now, well, it changes. I mean, yep. we've added so many no more bowlers. I used to be in the Bs the semi-pros and now i'm in the d division but that's a lot to do with my bowling hasn't been very good i'm i'm right on the bubble of getting relegated to the c's myself out of the b's dan well some bowlers go the other way dave went from d to c or no he stayed in the c because because we added dave, the d yeah we added the d this year no, like I said, his average is up to 106 on Wednesday night, so he could easily be a B, but. All right, nine 
so far. Nine box, so I don't think he's going to get to 117. He's at 82. He can only get to 112 for the triple strike. He's giving Mike a chance here. Mike still needs a big half to have a chance oh. in total. That was a great ball. Um, and he left the 6-9. Looked like a strike. 6-9, and that would, I think, it interferes. Might not. But he's got to go at the 6-pin one way or the other. Yeah, Does, it doesn't cover the 6. It's going to end up being one of his top three overall in his career. Oh, okay, for 5. So he'll be under 100 here. Right now he's right at 90. That's better. And that worked. So a 10 box, he was just slightly to the right on the spare attempt and came in a little bit more to the left, and that took it out. 92. A 575. Which is excellent. So Mike is at 507 after the five, fifth box, and he needs to get 68 pins to tie, 69 to win total. Oh, that's right. Total's in, in, in play. Total is back yep. in play now. And um, so he doesn't need a lot to take the game. That 62 half, he needs 31 pins. But he needs a 68 half to tie 69 to win. Mike's capable of it. And we start with four horsemen left. One, two, four, seven. Oh, just hooked it right. Make it tougher. I'm hearing a lot of kid noise through my ear headphones. I imagine you hear it on the All right seven box. Just clipped out this four pin. Sixty-eight after six. I have. He was at sixty-two, and that's a seven. That's a sixty-nine, Dan. All right. I mean, that is what the scoreboard said. No, it does. It missed a pin. I'm. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I think you, think some, you think there's some I think I missed a few today, but I, it's been going both ways, and I, I I notice it sometimes when it's a little too late to do anything about it because no one can remember. Yeah, he came in on a three pin that time. Yeah, you got to keep, you got to watch like a hawk. You know, back when we did this on grease pens and paper, yeah. I think the scoring was more accurate unless somebody dozed off at the table. Well, uh, we did it with pencil and paper at uh, Union Street lanes for a couple of years and uh, we found errors in the hand edition almost every single week well that can happen too um so you never get those when the, when, when, the, when it's counting overhead i mean it, right. it it may be more accurate to see what it is but actually people people miss all the time what they're seeing oh well, <laughs> there's a lot of pressure like in a money league like we had in a to to uh, when you're doing the grease pen and on the overhead you know, you get a lot of heat if you yeah. mess up. Well, it, it lulls you to sleep sometimes where you you think that the machine is accurate. That's uh, what happens it, here. And I think I think the scoring system here in this house is one of the best. You know, there's no manual input whatsoever. So Oh, there it is. There's a spare for Mike. So with no manual input, He'd been at that does lull you. To, you know, so if the cameras are off a little bit and they're missing or adding pins, you know, somebody's got to notice it. And that doesn't always happen. All right. So on the fill, he's back on that three pin and put six in there, and he's left with your lambda leave. Virtually all I remember of my Greek classes in college was the yeah. alphabet. Yeah, those lambdas will go like a four horseman. You've just got to hit in there, and Mike went wide right. He's won the string. <laughs> Now, with a lambda leave, that sh that's a six fill right there. See? Yep. Okay. I can't read it. And my, it, it they will make the correction right, on so, the end. Yeah, so that's, yeah I'm, I'm having a little trouble with my glasses right now. Mm -hmm. So things aren't totally clear to me up there all the time. And that ended up being a 9. 102. Uh, well, actually, I should It was a six fill. Well, okay. No, they're just correcting it. It's a 102. It's 102. Right. Okay. It was an eight fill. It was an eight in the ninth right, for one okay. or two. Okay, got it. And he'll well, he's he needs twenty eight, and that, that means will give my, Dave uh, Peterson will win the total. 
Give him four more. That'll be ten. And Mike Smith will win game five. He also won game two. As he bowls out the string. So Dave's well over his average. Mike's over his average today, too. Yeah, 547. Decent. Well, a few more to go. And one more. Eight, at That's eight to it. that, That's 555. It. That's a 111 average yep. for Mike. So both guys bowling very well today, um, having their ups and downs. And what's the point total Fi here? Eight? Final 10-4 ten, ten victory for Dave, Pe Dave Peterson, 575 to 556. We'll double check that with the official scores. 556, Mike. Five fifty six for him, five seventy five for you, Dave. Five forty five? Five fifty five. Was that a one eleven at the end? Okay. I I'm not sure. All right. Did you have an eight in the last one by any chance? Okay, you had an eight, not a not I had you at ninety. All right, so, so All right. our numbers are accurate. All right, so it's 110. No, it's 111. Mike just marked down 111. Oh, we're talking about a pin. It's immaterial. It's, yeah. And it's not enough to move average. It's an eight, yeah. Okay. The six fill, but uh, okay. Then you, then you had an eight. Okay, so you're. So it's 110. It is 110. All right, but both That's guys. That's the final official score, 575, 555. Well over average for both guys. Um, <laughs> Dave put on a great show here. That 150 game to start. Congratulations. Dave, Dave should be moving up into playoff uh, contention. Mike Smith has some work to do for Dan Castle, Bob Lee at the Candlepin Bowling Network and the Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. Goodbye. And we'll